So hi, uh, today uh, we will start on uh, switching power supplies and uh, let's do a you know quick discussion on what are the requirements of uh, these power supplies. So first, you know, it can be regulated output voltage. So even if your input voltage is changing, maybe you want a constant output voltage at the output. And secondly, electric isolation, you know, we will uh, discuss it in more detail. But normally switch mode power supplies has isolated uh, output so the grounds and uh, of the input and output are uh, totally separated either uh, by using a transformer or another mechanism okay so again what you want is you want a minimum size and weight so you want a high power density you know, which can be done by increasing uh, switching frequencies or the, you know that kind of uh, techniques then uh, you are starting limited by the switching losses or in other uh, thermal concentrations okay so again you know as every engineering problem uh, the cost is uh, quite a big concern and you would like to keep the cost at minimum again for in order to get the maximum output uh, power uh, for the for the same size or whatever uh, same input power you want to have the maximum efficiency and again you know even if there is not a you know straight limitation on the efficiency if your efficiency is low then that means you have some extra heat you need to dissipate so maybe you need to use a larger heat sink or you know force cooling that kind of things so those things also increases the size and uh, the cost of the device so most of the time you know increasing efficiency you know reduces the burden on your uh, thermal circuits so okay so normally you know probably uh, in the second or third year uh, you use one of those uh, linear regulators like LM series 7805 so those are called the linear regulators and they don't have any switching components in it so they are like usually uh, put like using a BJT transformer so you have an error amplifier so by just uh, checking the output voltage you can control the base current of that transistor but since that transistor itself is working as a you know, variable resistance most of the power is dissipated and the efficiencies of uh, those linear regulators are kind of low and actually you can feel it they are you know heating up uh, quite uh, quickly and you need to use heat sinks and that kind of things okay so another thing if you would like to get some power from uh, directly from ac either single phase or uh, three phase uh, if you just convert it uh, at 60 or 50 hertz frequency uh, we will discuss those things in the next week but if you use a, fr a transformer at a low frequency that increases its size why because the voltage induced in a transformer proportional to two things one of them is the flux and the other one is the frequency of that flux so if the frequency gets lower so you know you need to increase the flux so that can be done by increasing the cross-section area of the transformer anyway so this is like a you know old style uh, linear uh, linear uh, linear dc power supply which you can first reduce the voltage let's say from 230 to 15 volts then you rectify that 50 or 60 hertz signal then you have a dc voltage again with some ripple due to that rectification and you dissipate like half of maybe more than half of the uh, energy as heat and you get your output voltage so at that you know they are not like really efficient and the because of that low frequency transformer they are uh, quite large and heavy so BJT operating in linear region which is dissipating heat and efficiency is really low okay but again there can be some cases uh, linear regulators can be used and the most ad obvious advantage is they don't have any switching components so they don't create any EMI problems so they are you know some people like really obsessed with the music analog music you know that kind of uh, equipments so they prefer to use uh, linear power supplies because somehow if you use a low quality uh, switching power supply 
the switching frequencies can affect the quality of your music through EMI. Okay, so this week and you know in the probably in the next two weeks uh, we will be discussing different topologies for switching uh, DC power supplies or they are also called uh, SMPS uh, switching mode power supplies or isolated uh, power converters. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the general uh, schematic here. So again, you can get either if you have a DC source, you can get it directly through DC or if you have AC, instead of first connecting it to a transformer, I mean, there are also some EMI filters and that kind of stuff, but then actually first you rectify, you rectify the AC voltage directly. So that way you get a quite large uh, DC voltage, but it is again unregulated. I mean, again, that uh, grid voltage can be taught as uh, constant, but you know, it can go up and down, or maybe it is not even a grid voltage. It can be get from uh, somewhere else. Okay, so then uh, what you have is uh, the switching components. Okay, so as we have seen in the first semester, like in bug boost converter, we will have inductors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors, the usual components, but not uh, BJTs or not resistive components. Then the idea is you connect some kind of transformer, but that transformer is not working at 50 Hertz, but uh, working at a high frequency. And because of that high frequency, the size of that transformer can be reduced. And again, I mean, this is a simple schematic of a uh, transformer as you can see the input and output are isolated so the ground of that uh, output is floating with respect to the primary side okay then again what we know is uh, transformers only works with AC signals if you just constantly apply a DC then they will saturate so the output cannot be like pure uh, DC uh, so what you need another rectifier stage or filter stage and then you can get a regulated uh, DC output but in order to get some uh, regulated uh, in order to have some regulated uh, voltage what you need to do is you need to get a feedback okay so this is your uh, feedback and this is your set value so you are trying to get that output voltage there's an error amplifier there's a controller but if you connect that one directly through here then you break break the isolation we will talk about what is that isolation okay and so therefore you use a there are different techniques we will discuss but you transmit the signal again by using a high frequency signal transformers but at the end the general topology is you rectify uh, the if you have an AC input you rectify it first so you get a high DC output then you make your uh, switching uh, converter, then you use a kind of transformer, mutual inductor to transfer power. Okay, so again, uh, it can be like uh, different cases. You can use a single uh, transformer, I mean, single uh, primary winding, but multiple secondary windings. So using the same uh, sh switching components and the uh, same primary winding, you can get different voltage values. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at a case study. Again, uh, you can click on the link and you can find more details. So this is uh, inside of a, I think 65 watt uh, Apple uh, MacBook charger. Okay, probably now they have newer versions. So let's have a look at that one. Okay, so this is where you connect uh, your input so it comes like AC 230 volts or I don't know if it's, if it's a US version so then okay there's some uh, fuse and that kind of things then you have a bridge rectifier okay so that is the rectifier and you just directly connect it and co convert it to DC okay then again uh, you have a couple of uh, filter capacitors and inductors so they are either I don't know if they are like pure inductors or sometimes uh, they use like common mode filters, differential mode filters like uh, oppositely wound uh, 
toroids anyway so then there's a boost inductor here okay probably just to increase the voltage level if it is not enough and then there's the PFC capacitor PFC uh, controller we will uh, discuss those things uh, in, the, in the semester so PFC is short for power factor corrector so you want a kind of unity power factor at the output so you have your PFC capacitor and here you have the drive transistor so these are I think in the previous slide uh, is, is seen here and normally they have a metal casing here so they are all you know sitting uh, as a heatsink so it's not shown here so they have the uh, transistors here then that is again the main uh, transformer that I was talking so this is the transformer and the primary side of that transformer is connected to the all that high voltage side and the secondary side okay uh, is connected to the output DC output and in the secondary side you have also like some diodes again for rectification of that uh, output of the transformer there are some filter capacitors blah 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 and if you follow that uh, red line okay that is called the isolation boundary okay and actually nothing connected from here to that side okay in order to transfer the signal in order to get some feedback from the output voltage what they use is opto isolator I mean in the previous slide I showed the case with the signal uh, transformer but in this one opto isolator is used so the signal is transmitted from secondary side to the primary side using some uh, light intensity or PWM I don't know but there is no electrical connection between these things so what is again uh, let's discuss about you know what is the isolation and why we do we need isolation in that kind of circuits I mean the first one is uh, safety electrical safety so for example even if you have I don't know uh, let's say you have a boost converter okay a simple boost converter like that right so that one is opening up and down and let's say I mean boost converter maybe is not a good topology because the, then the input uh, voltage will be lower uh, than your output so uh, let's use a I don't know a back converter right so you have that kind of uh, topology and let's say you have I don't know 200 volts uh, DC okay and you would like to get uh, 12 volt DC at the output again I mean you can calculate the duty cycles and that can you know operate easily so you can generate a 12 volt DC supply but what happens if there's a problem in your control and your transistor stays at on condition or what happens if there's a you know fault in your uh, transistor and there's a short circuit through that one right so once you have that short circuit then suddenly that becomes 200 volts and that 200 volts is directly transferred to the user so there's a possibility that user get electrocuted so that is the first reason whenever you have some uh, high input voltages so using isolated power supplies uh, becoming a requirement so if you have a high frequency transformer they are also use uh, they are also called uh, galvanic let me write it here galvanic isolation okay so the primary side and secondary side are not directly connected right even if you make it like short circuit through here if you just apply uh, some uh, DC voltage through here then it will saturate the core and it will not transmit uh, power directly or there is you know a short circuit from here to that side is 
quite has a quite low probability and in order to even minimize that there are some regulations stating like what is the minimum clearance between the high voltage site and low voltage site so in designing uh, your circuit so you don't put any like PCB layers through that side okay there's a clear boundary between the high voltage and low voltage side and in some products you can even see they cut it they cut the PCB in some aspects just to show it uh, there's a clear uh, boundary between those ones okay and again uh, safety and uh, galvanic isolation requirement uh, is the most important part for uh, using that transformers and secondly you know it can be useful even if the voltage levels are not high uh, using a galvanic isolation using a transformer like that uh, will help you to get a floating output voltage so the I mean in this case okay in this case so all your grounds are connected between input and output and again there can be like in that manner there can be a short circuit from here and they are your your grounds suddenly becomes energized anyway but even if that is not the problem uh, sometimes you want a floating output voltage so you can uh, run your I don't know analog signals uh, more freely that kind of things another thing is the EMI problems by using that kind of uh, transformer isolation basically any you are breaking the ground loops so because in that one uh, if you have a high frequency signal that high frequency signal can move from the ground line and affect other equipments you know that kind of uh, EMI problems and by using uh, some kind of isolation boundary actually you are separating your input and output completely and you are transferring all the power using the magnetic coupling as we will see and as a last advantage as you know uh, once you use the transformer you can adjust the turns ratio okay you have like m1 and n2 under your control because in a normal buck con converter so let's say this is uh, 10 volts so this has to be operate around what like around five percent duty cycle so it is not efficient so it will be on for five percent of the time and it will be off for 95 percent of the time so because of that that l and c has to be quite large so using buck converter to reduce the voltage quite a long long uh, step is not really effective right so by using again it can be a boost or buck topology whatever but having duty cycle and having a turns ratio adjustment because what you can do is you can use a 10 to 1 for example 10 to 1 uh, transformer here and suddenly your uh, switching equipment doesn't have to deal with very large with uh, very large duty cycles or very low duty cycles so you can optimize uh, your operating range uh, by using the turns ratio adjustments anyway so we will discuss those things okay so that's all uh, for today and the next video we will discuss the flyback converter